This woman knocked over everything in the house, then drew 800 her own blood and flung it all over the house with reckless abandon and smears it on the floor. Repeatedly rubbing and smearing the scene of the crime is created. A wooden stick stained with blood is placed in the cooker, deliberately leaving a gap. That is the victim, who was easily spotted. She then mysteriously disappears. This woman Amy, a senior student at Harvard University. At a party, she meets Nick, the funny editor-in-chief. The two quickly warm up. The two of them soon fall in love. But there comes a time when the passion subsides. On the morning of their fifth anniversary, Nick goes to the bar to talk to his sister. But a phone call from a neighbor called him. Back at home, Nick senses that something is wrong when he sees what's in front of him. Nick is stunned to see that his wife has disappeared. His wife had disappeared. The police then arrived. They looked around the room. The attentive policemen saw bloodstains on the wardrobe. It was clear that Amy's layout had attracted the attention of the police. Nick has taken to the police station for questioning. The house is sealed off. He has no choice but to stay at his sister's house. At night, the police came back to the scene. A letter left by Amy was found in the wardrobe. They found a letter in the wardrobe which read Clue 1. The police were puzzled, so they called in Nick. Nick said that it was a puzzle that he and Amy had played. He guessed that the destination was his office. Sure enough, Clue 2 was then found in the office. The letter suggested that the next destination was the brown room. At the same time, the police found a pair of sexy pants. Nick looked embarrassed. The police didn't press the issue any further. Instead, they asked him where his brown room was. Nick said he didn't know, but he lied. At night, he sneaked up to the cottage alone. Here he found clue 3. The police came with him. Nick hid the letter and told the police that the house belonged to his father and that it was blue, not some brown cottage, and then drove off inside. But what the police didn't know was that Nick's father's name was Brown, which means brown. Nick opened clue 3. It reads 5th anniversary of preparing candy wear. Nick furiously put the letter away. A late night text message startled Nick the moment he pushed open the door. A woman lunges frantically at Nick. This woman is one of his students. They hadn't seen each other for a long time. But Nick says it's the last time. After dawn, the woman left. Nick thought he hadn't seen her. But then he turns around and sees his sister. Her sister confronted him. How long he had been lying to everyone? Nick replied, a year and a half. Her sister scolded. Nick hysterically. By the end of the night, Nick was speaking at Amy's rescue meeting when suddenly one of the neighbors jumped in to accuse Nick and told everyone that Amy was pregnant. By then, everyone was stunned. There was an uproar. Reporters chased Nick and asked him about it. Nick runs away. Woman in front of me had a hammer in her hand. The next moment, towards her own face, because she was going to make it look like her husband had committed domestic violence. Amy has been planning this for a long time. She makes friends with her pregnant neighbor, feeds her the story of her husband's domestic violence. Every now and then, she's been making friends with her pregnant neighbors. She runs up her husband's debts. She raises her life insurance while her husband is not looking. She then buys the getaway car with cash through a website. Then she drains the family toilet, invites the pregnant woman's neighbors to her home, and takes the opportunity to obtain the pregnant woman's urine. In this way, she successfully fakes her pregnancy. Finally, she keeps a diary of their lives. After setting everything up, she rightly disappeared. And all this, it was all to get back at her cheating husband, Nick. At this point, Nick has just returned home from a rescue meeting. The policeman confronts Nick with the results of the lab tests on the kitchen floor. There was a large amount of white blood on the kitchen floor. It didn't look like an ordinary disappearance. It was more like a murder. And we also found out that you were heavily overdrawn on credit cards for luxury items. 
Amy's life insurance had been increased to a million and two. Nick was speechless. He shattered his glass in anger because the person concerned had the right to remain silent. So the police had no choice but to stop. The police went back to Nick's father's old house. After a search, they found the unburned diary in the fireplace. The diary was a record of Nick and Amy's life together. But at the end it reads, you may truly kill me. Meanwhile, Nick had also solved the secret of clue 3 and found the house where the candy was hidden. Nick arrives at the house the moment he pushed the door and turned on the light. He was stunned to see a room full of luxury items. Nick took one of the gift boxes back to his sister's house. They deciphered the meaning of it. Nick realizes that his wife is not missing. Amy had set it all up. Nick realizes the seriousness of the situation. He finds a lawyer who specializes in such cases. The man with the glasses. He describes the whole thing to him. The glasses man said it was absurd. But he accepts Nick's invitation, and he decides to help Nick get his wife back. The man gives Nick the contact details of Amy's ex-boyfriend. Nick also received information from Amy's ex-boyfriend that she had staged a farce of her own that has left her ex-boyfriend in the lurch for 10 years. Back at home, Nick follows the glasses man's arrangement. He publicly states that he had nothing to do with his wife's disappearance. Secondly, he admits to cheating on his wife and that he would change his ways. He hopes that Amy will give him a chance. He successfully established himself as a good man. This act was well received. Amy had been gone for five days. She had cut off her long hair and dyed it, changing her image completely. Rented a flat in a strange place. She has met her new neighbors and gets on very well. But it doesn't last long. The new neighbor unexpectedly finds out that Amy is rich. They bet Amy won't call the police. So the very next day, they robbed Amy. Amy drove away from the area. By coincidence, she runs into her first love, Jack, in a bar. This rich first love listens to Amy's confession. Decides to take Amy to his pillow to settle down. This woman had tied a rope around her ankles and deliberately making signs of having been tied up. Stains her nightgown with red wine, then runs to the camera. She collapses in pain. What was her intention in doing so? Not long ago, Annie was brought back to the villa by her first boyfriend, Jack. But Amy found that the whole house is under surveillance. And this Jack is controlling her at every turn. He buys her clothes, changes her hair. He wants her to look the way he wants her to look. Amy couldn't stand it. One night, the two of them are watching television and they happen to see Nick on TV. Confessing Amy was moved. The Nick from the beginning is back. This was the Nick she loved so much. So she made up her mind to return home to Nick. She was ready to return home to be with Nick. She needed a good reason for her disappearance, of course. And Jack was just the thing to explain his disappearance. One morning, Amy, before Jack left the house, deliberately kissed the other man. She even bit his lip and messed up his clothes and hair. By the time Jack left the house, Amy then directed herself to the opening scene. In the evening, Jack came back. You see Amy dressed and waiting for him. He was so happy. While Jack was in the throes of passion, she took out the knife she had hidden under the pillow. She finished Jack off with a single blow. By the next day, Amy returned to her home covered in blood. Nick was stunned to see her. He knew that Amy was in disguise. Nick took Amy to the hospital and the police arrived. The police arrived. Amy tells the police that Jack has kidnapped her and is holding her captive in the villa. Everything seemed to make sense. The female officer in charge of the case thinks otherwise, but she is interrupted by her boss. Amy gave a ghostly smile to Nick at the door. The two returned home surrounded by a large number of reporters and fans. The moment the door was closed, Amy finally confesses everything to Nick 
and threatened Nick to do what her husband should do the rest of his life. Every day, Nick is on edge. He was afraid that one day Amy would kill him if she was unhappy. So he tried to tell the press about it. But then, just then, Amy gives him a gift. She's pregnant, Nick. Questioned with a puzzled look on his face. Amy told him that she had removed Nick's frozen sperm from a year ago and then artificially inseminated him. She was sure Nick would not abandon her baby, but didn't know what to say. But he doesn't know what to say. The two walked down the stairs, facing the media cameras. Nick chose to compromise Amy's smiles with satisfaction.